What's up guys, it's the great Mr. Lizard here. Today I'm going to be talking about the atomic science mod with regards to uh, basic fission reactors and breeder reactors. And I was holding off doing this because the thermometers weren't working properly, um, but it looks like they're working uh, well enough that we can actually make these uh, machines. So let's get started. All right, we're working with version 1.2.0.63. Um, one thing to keep in mind before you get started with any of this uranium processing or anything like that is you need to wear a hazmat suit. Um, I'm wearing one right now, and you can see I'm carrying uranium-235 and uranium-238. If I take this hazmat suit off, I'll immediately get radiation poisoning. So you can see the, like, the little green bubbles, and you can see my effect here. So um, this will stay, this radiation poisoning will stay until um, until I put the hazmat suit back on. So uh, if I could change into survival here, I start to basically die. Uh, luckily I'm in peaceful, so I'm uh, replenishing my health, but if I was in easy or normal, I would just simply die away. So make sure you wear a hazmat suit on whenever you're carrying these two uh, pieces of uranium. Uh, the uranium ore, it used to cause some radiation poisoning, but I was testing with it in this version and it didn't seem to cause any radiation poisoning. Um, if you guys have different experiences, leave them in the comments. Um, one thing to keep in mind too is as the, you can see the hazmat suit is slowly decaying. Eventually the durability will go to zero and it will break. So you're going to need to uh, make more hazmat pieces um, every once in a while. So just keep that in mind. Um, anyway, so you'll find these uranium ores throughout the world. You can just dig them up with an iron or higher. Um, iron pickaxe or anything better than that. Um, and once you get these uranium ores, you can process them, and that's how you'll make these reactors and make a ton of energy. So um, we have three different kind of machines here. Um, there's two possible setups, and one, one's way more efficient than the other. Um, but let's start with the cheaper setup first. So <clears throat> the cheaper setup involves a nuclear boiler. You'll just go into the boiler, and you'll throw uranium ore in this space here. Um, note, note that it requires water to run. Right now, I just have an aqueous accumulator back here, sending an infinite stream of water into the nuclear boiler but you will need water to make it run. Um, and every uranium ore that you put in a nuclear boiler will create 400 liters of uranium hexafluoride. And if you set this up next to each other like this, they will, the uranium hexafluoride will immediately be transferred from the boiler into the centrifuge. And you can also use pipes and stuff like that to transfer between them, but I think this is the easiest and cheapest way to set this up. Um, every 200 liters of uranium hexafluoride will either produce a uranium-235 or a uranium-238. Um, and so for every one uranium ore, you'll produce two pieces of uranium. Um, so as you can see, that's going on there. We wait for it to happen. But um, a lot better way to process uranium is actually use, use a chemical extractor. Um, this is going to require some extra materials, but I think it's um, worth it to spend the extra time doing that. So if we go in here, like I said, this will also require water. If you just let this run without uranium, it'll produce deuterium, as you can see in my last video. Um, but if we throw uranium inside, it'll produce yellow cake. And it'll produce three yellow cake for every one uranium ore. Now if we take this yellow cake and we go put it in a nuclear boiler, <clears throat> each yellow cake will produce 400 liters of uranium hexafluoride. So if you compare that with putting uranium ore directly into the nuclear boiler, one uranium ore will produce 400 liters of uranium hexafluoride, where by extracting it first, you'll essentially produce um, 1,200 liters of uranium, uranium hexafluoride. So it's three times more efficient. I would highly suggest that you get this setup uh, rather than this setup, but I can understand that you know, it is the additional material. So something to keep in mind. Um, so eventually, like I said, it'll produce the uranium-235 or 238. Let's move on. Um, by the way, one thing to note is I noticed these uh, items exist. Uh, extra utilities produce a bunch of different drums for all different kinds of liquids. So in case you wanted to store your uranium hexafluoride instead of sending it all those through the process to uranium 235 or 238 is one way to store it. And you can just send build craft, build craft pipes into the drums and it'll store it pretty quickly. So, all right, let's move on. So the first kind of basic fission reactor requires the uranium 235 to be made into fissile fuel rods. And how you do that? You just set up the 235s with the empty cells on each side and it'll produce one fissile fuel rod. So I'm gonna go through with you guys exactly how to make one of these basic fission reactors here. All right, I got all my items from my fission reactor. Uh, let's head over here and uh, first step is to make your basically uh, casing, if you will. Um, 
I would build a couple blocks up. I mean, you can obviously do it in the ground, it's another option for you, but um, I just like doing it a little coal blocks up, and I like this quartz glass. This quartz glass is nice because you actually can stick items on the glass. As you can see, I put the ladders on the glass over there, so that's my personal uh, choice, but you can use whatever you want. You know, hopefully if you make the reactor correctly, you don't have to worry about it blowing up or anything like that. So you um, need to make a five by five space. So here we go. And then the next step is to <clears throat> build up one side on all the edges or one block on all the edges. This one basically encase the water that surrounds your reactor. Um, then I have some reactor or some water source blocks. I'm gonna get those out here. <clears throat> and we'll basically just put those all around. Um, first let us place our reactor cell right in the middle here. We don't need this we don't need these blocks in the middle. But we'll put the reactor cell there, and then you want to surround it with water, so All right, looks good. Um, the water will encase the reactor cell. Um, now, if you just put a fissile fuel rod right in the middle here and just send it on its way, um, it'll just heat up and it'll eventually explode. So, best way to watch out for that is actually to use a thermometer. So, Atomic Science makes some the Atomic Science mod makes this thermometer, um, and you can use it to track the temperature and basically use control rods to prevent it from getting too hot. So I'm going to show you how you do that. Um, when you hold the thermometer in your hand, you have to shift right click the reactor cell. This will tell the thermometer to track the reactor cell at that coordinate, as you can see in the bottom left. Um, then we'll place the thermometer right here. Uh, and as you can see in the front, it shows the thermometer, it shows the threshold, and then it will show the coordinates. And the threshold means that at a certain temperature, it will send a redstone signal. So if you notice, uh, the GUI for the reactor cell, cell showed the max being at um, 1,000 Kelvin. So right here, as you can see, so we're going we're gonna to do 900. So if you actually uh, shift right click, it'll go up in hundreds. So I'll just go right up to 900 there. And like I said, that'll send a reso signal uh, once, once the temperature of the reactor cell um, exceeds 900 Kelvin. To send the control rods up, it has to be right next to the reactor cell. Um, in real fission reactors, the control rods are used to cool down the chemical reaction. Um, so we're going to do the same thing here. Uh, I have control rods, and the best way to basically control whether they're up or down is to use sticky pistons. So I'm, I'm going to throw the control rods right here on either side. They're currently down because you want the reaction to go and then to kind of just use those to pop up when needed. Um, we're going to go underneath and we'll put the sticky pistons right here and then we'll use a wrench to change them around so it's facing up obviously so they the control rods of what's going up and down um, and then we'll connect this through a redstone little uh, system so I've in my experience I've thought that red net cable works the best for connecting the thermometer to the sticky piston but you can obviously do whatever you want um, if I just right click here and set this up and there you go. So once the thermometer of the reactor cell exceeds 100 Kelvin, the control rods will come up and stop the reaction. So let's test that out here. If we throw a fissile fuel rod in, in the reactor, we can go check out what the temperature is. See it exceeding. It looks like I said it's 800, but that's fine too. Okay. If I right click, shift right click one more time, it's 900, so it'll get a little hotter. But you can do whatever you want. If you want to play it safe more, you can set it to 800 Kelvin. Um, the lower you the threshold, the less, less electricity it will produce. Um, to extract electricity, uh, you're basically going to extract it out of the water here. So you can see we have seven water blocks um, with the control rods kind of bouncing every once in a while. But uh, the most simple way to do that is to use electric turbines. So I put the electric turbines where the water blocks are. The electric turbines will sit over them and they'll start to turn. See so here, that one's starting to kind of turn a little bit there. When they start to turn, it means that they're producing electricity. And I can extract that electricity out of the top by using these energy conduits. So, uh, let's just move all these on top here. Then I can send all this 
electricity into an energy cell. Um, just for the purpose of this uh, video, I'll just throw the energy cell right here. But if you have some kind of main power room, you can connect it to that. Um, remember, energy conduits don't lose energy over distance. Um, it's a finite energy loss. So, if we click into here, we can see it during the game of uh, redstone flux at an insane rate. Um, even this little, little tiny uh, system is producing a ton of electricity. So, it's a basic uh, fission reactor. Um, I'm just going to leave that going for a minute. I'll show you what you can do if you expand upon this. Um, the water in real fission reactors, the water is used uh, to produce electricity because it heats up and then turns a turbine um, through steam, essentially. So you can actually extract that steam using these steam funnels, and then using fluid pipes, you can send it up into the extra turbines. Um, basically the same system over here, except just making it a lot bigger. And you have this real estate up in the air uh, to make basically three sets of nine electric turbines. Once you have nine electric turbines, um, you can right click with a wrench in the middle, in the middle block, and it'll make this cool looking fan. Um, then you can just extract the electricity out the top. Just turn the low weather off here. And send that down into your energy cell or wherever you want. Um, one thing to keep in mind is that uh, you'll start to accumulate toxic waste. If we go look at our reactor over here, and right click in. You'll notice toxic waste is starting to build up. We have 1.72 kiloliters. Um, the best way to track that out is to actually use a, in my opinion, is to use a little craft pipe. So we just take our a wooden fluid pipe here and a cobblestone and then a void pipe. Um, and just add it right on. Right into void pipe. Arctic gate to basically extract the fluid out. And just say if there's fluid in, turn it into a pulsar, and it'll start to pulse off, and I'll start to get the toxic waste out, and the void pipe will go away. Um, I don't have any use for toxic waste, so that's what I would do. Um, but you can use a tank like I did over here too to just collect the toxic waste. So, all right. Uh, next step, we'll move on. We just pull this piss off fuel rod out of the uh, reactor here. Get the reaction to stop. So you can see it's depleted a little bit. Uh, the durability is going to, has gone down because it's been in the reactor producing electricity. Um, eventually, the durability will go down so much that it basically won't be cost effective to use it anymore to produce electricity. And what you can do then is uh, make a breeder reactor and it will replenish the durability of that fissile fuel rod so we'll be able to use it again in a reactor. This is a basic breeder reactor design. Um, I'm not actually going to build one for you because it'll take too long. Um, and it's essentially the same design as a, uh, a basic reactor, but I'll show you kind of what's going on here. Um, it's a glass case. Obviously, you can build in the ground or whatever. Underneath, I have control rods. Um, and I have the difference is you have five reactor cells. So the design is you put the fissile fuel rod in the middle and four breeder reactor cells around the sides. The breeder reactor cell is made, if we click in here, using that uranium-238 that's also made. The 235 is made for the fissile fuel rods. The 238 is used for the breeding cells. Use three 238s, six empty cells, you make a breeder fuel rod. And if you have four breeder fuel rods, um, you throw them in all the uh, reactor cells that are surrounding the middle one and then throw a fissile fuel rod in the middle and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. Um, and then the other thing to worry about too is that it will heat up so you need to have some kind of control rod system in place to make sure that it doesn't overheat. Um, I use a ton of control rods just to be safe. I have uh, one here, you know, on every cardinal direction then kind of in between. So if I go underneath you can see I have all my sticky pistons and all of this connected from the thermometers, which are on every outer reactor cell. You don't need one in the middle, um, connected in to, right to those sticky pistons. So that's what I would do. Like I said, you have uh, five reactor cells. You put thermometers on the four outer ones. You have those directly connected to your sticky pistons with the control rods that shoot up and cool down the reaction. All right, so let's see what this looks like. And um, instead, because I have all that uh, real estate down being used underneath, I have the toxic waste coming out the top. So we'll throw, let's 
get our breeder. I left my breeder fuel rods in this chest here. We don't need these. All right. So those the breeder ones all on the outsides and the Fissile fuel rod right in the middle one. Over here, you can just right click, draw them. Or first look inside. So if you look inside the middle one, so the first off your rod, it shows the temperature here and you know, produce toxic waste, which being extracted. One thing that looks weird is if you look at time left, time left is actually going up. Um, it means that it's actually being replenished. The durability is going up and it'll be able to be used again in a regular fission reactor. Um, and your breeder reactors on the outside, they'll slowly lose time, but it's pretty slow and um, they should be able to replenish multiple fuel rods uh, depending on how replenished they or rip, uh, <coughs> depending on how replenished they are in the first place. So this is a basic breeder reactor design. Obviously you can expand upon this. Um, you can actually stack reactor cells too, so if you you can just put a reactor cell on top of this just by right clicking. Um, you can have fun making your own designs. So um, that's about it. If you guys have any questions, make sure to leave them in the comment section. Um, I'm going to be making more videos focusing on TechIt and kind of how to use industrial or what was industrial craft in the new mod. So um, I look forward to hearing any questions you guys have, and I'll be making more videos in the future. Thanks.